Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Um, I wanted to talk to you quickly about, well, I always say quickly, but it takes 20 minutes. Uh, I want to talk to you about the three different choices we're going to have in 2021, 2022 um, for electric trucks. Uh, there's really four choices, uh, but I'm not going to talk about the F-150, and I'll tell you why I don't want to talk about it in, in just a minute. Um, really, for me, the front runners that everybody's talking a lot about because there's a lot of mystery about them still and they're promising a hell of a lot of performance and a hell of a lot of capability um, and they they're also promising all to be out by next year it are we got the rivian r1t we have the hummer ev from gmc and obviously we have that cyber truck so uh quickly just to kind of go through these and my opinion on these um Rivian, I've been super impressed with this company. A lot of investment from some big names like Amazon uh, over the years. They've been really focused. They've, they've had excellent communication with consumers. Uh, and um, the design really speaks to me anyway. Um, I, I love the whole outdoor kind of focus. Uh, I love the quality of the interior from what I can see and what I've heard. Um, of people that have actually seen um, the the truck up close, um, and uh, I, I'm I'm very impressed with what they've done so far. Uh, the Hummer, I am so in love with this idea. I love this design. I was a real big fan of the H1. Really hated the H2 and the H3, but this to me is exactly what what the Hummer EV would look like if. It was designed by just like the perfect people, and it obviously was. Uh, I love all the features. I love the whole crab walk thing, and uh, and and the light bar in the front, and the removable roof, and the immense amount of power it's going to have. I love the look of the interior, the quality of the materials that they're showing, at least that they're going to use. I love the overall look of it. Um, I think this is going to be a tremendous uh, truck. Uh, just look at that. I mean, it, it looks insanely uh, roomy and very spacious and luxurious with really fine materials. Now, uh, whether or not this all comes to fruition, the way they're displaying here, it's hard to say. Uh, and of course, it's really just to, it's hard to judge anything with any of these three trucks uh, this soon. Uh, but I, I really am impressed with uh, everything I see here, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, before the Hummer EV came out, I was all about the Rivian R1T until I saw this, and man, I gotta say, it's gonna be a tough choice when the when the choice does finally come. This is the only one with a removable roof, and I love removable roofs. Um, uh, I, as you many of you know, I uh, drive a Jeep Gladiator for daily driver, and I had the roof and the doors off all summer. Well, actually for like seven months from March to just a couple of weeks ago. Love that. Love that whole thing, the whole concept. I absolutely love it. And I love how capable all three of these vehicles are going to be. But the Hummer certainly looks very capable from uh, just at least the promo materials, right? It's really difficult to kind of... Uh, giving you this stuff credence. Um, and then finally, we have the Cybertruck. Now, um, I have to be honest and tell you that I still am not at all in love with this design. I know a lot of you are, and good for you. Uh, this is the only one of these three trucks that I don't have a deposit on. Uh, I just don't care for it. Um, there's, there's a lot that I don't like about it, and there's very few things that I like about it. One of the things I hate is the size of the, the height of this uh, side panel right here. And keep scrolling on me, but it's impossible to load anything from here. And I and I do that with my truck all the time. I'm loading things uh, where you know I like to use my truck. So this is not a usable thing for me. Um, now I like. Like, for example, I, I like this idea of this ramp. I have a bunch of motorcycles, as you guys know, and having a built-in ramp would be super cool. I don't know how realistic that is, <laughs> but, um, you know, I also own a ramp, so I don't know if that's really a necessary thing. I, I'm sure that would be an option anyway. Uh, the tonneau cover, uh, which is over here, that's really cool. Uh, I don't know how well that would perform. Um, but again, you know, that's, that's true with all of them. 
Which brings me to the last thing. I do not like, have never liked the interior of any Tesla. They're, to me, they're, they're, they don't use high-end materials. They're uh, cheap, really, to the feel. Now, I want to cl uh, clarify here and qualify what I'm saying. I drove a Model X uh, for four days straight. I drove a Model 3 for two days. And I drove a Model S, uh, very handsomely optioned, uh, two different occasions for two days each. Uh, and those were full day drives. Uh, and again, my opinion stands, Tesla kills it with performance. Tesla kills it with uh, the software, over-the-air software updates. And uh, to some extent, they kill it with uh, kind of the, the software within the car. I absolutely dislike the interiors. I don't like the controls, and I never will get used to it. I like buttons for things. That's just the kind of guy I am. I know that's that's a matter of opinion, a matter of taste. But really, it's not a matter of opinion that the quality that they use on the interior of their cars is just not up to par with, you know, and what I usually compare everything to, which is the Mercedes E-Class. I feel like that's the entry level to the luxury market. And you can get a Mercedes E-Class for about fifty, sixty thousand dollars about sixty grand. And if your car is $120,000 and you, the quality of your interior is not nearly as good as an E-Class, you're kind of failing in one of the major areas of what you would consider a high-end uh, car, right? And Teslas are high-end cars, mostly because of price, right? Now, the Model 3 is, you can't expect it to be that. It starts at $35,000. Many people are getting the base Model 3 nowadays, and I think it's a wonderful, wonderful car. Uh, I actually think that is my favorite of the Tesla lineup. Uh, I absolutely hated the Model X. Again, I drove it for four days, long drives, short drives, fast drives, slow drives, all of that. Hated the doors, couldn't get used to it. I, inside the garage, it was a disaster. Everyone will kill me for this, but I know you're lying to yourself if you think that the doors of the Model X are functional. <laughs> They're not a functional part of that truck or car or van, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I don't think the model, I don't think the Cybertruck's going to have that problem, but it, it does have a lot of problems. It does have these design features that they're building in that that I that I think is is going to be a disaster. Uh, but what the Cybertruck kills it on is price. Holy cow. These are some great pricing. I mean, fully optioned. Well, okay, not fully optioned. Sorry. Full spec. So full self-driving with the three motor. It's still cheaper than those other two options. So that's a big deal. And Tesla's had a few years of this, right? So these guys are going to be better at a lot of it, right? At a lot of it, they're going to be better at. They're not going to be as good in necessarily interior quality just because of what I've already seen. I, I refuse to believe that they're going to somehow step it up for the Cybertruck. Tesla does have some service uh, issues, right? If you're if you're a Tesla owner and you've had to service your, your car, you know uh, what you have to deal with sometimes, long waits and, and some hassles and whatnot. Uh, probably as good as it's going to get. And the problem I have with Rivian is they haven't even opened that can of worms yet. They don't even know what that's like yet. Also, the charging network that Tesla has, these other two are probably not going to be anywhere near it. So Tesla's got that huge advantage. But from an interior quality standpoint, just going based on photos and what I've heard from people, that isn't much, but what I've heard from people, these two options, the Rivian and the Hummer, are going to eat the lunch right there, eat Tesla's lunch. Uh, they're going to be more expensive, but I also feel like the Hummer is going to have the advantage that they're uh, leveraging GMC's already network of dealers that are in place, uh, and uh, GMC's kind of got just a real estate around the country with, with those network of dealers that they're going to be able to service these trucks a little faster and easier. And they may be able to also put in charging stations a little bit more um, 
quickly than Rivian can. Now, I, that's that's a big if. I don't really know. But again, guys, if you're talking that if you're talking about a three to four hundred mile range, and this is at three hundred plus, three hundred fifty plus, and the Rivian is um, you know three hundred to four hundred. Uh, the, the Tesla truck is, you know, at least that 500 plus mile range. You're talking about 300 plus mile range. I don't think the charging network is going to be a real deal breaker, right? I don't, it's not every day I go 300 miles, right? I maybe at most will go 100 miles in a day. And so that's well within the capacity of all three of these trucks, even if they're overstated and even if I'm driving badly, I should be able to get there and back to charge it at home, no problem. So that um, brings us to my next point with these. Uh, so, so you may be wondering, I don't know if you are, but you may be wondering which one am I gonna go with? I'm really, I really don't like the Tesla uh, truck. I, I just don't like the looks of it. And that, that on its own will eliminate it from my list. But I also, again, quality of the interior, functionality of this truck bed, it's just not gonna do it for me. So I'm, I'm good for you if you place an order for this and I wish you the best, uh, but I don't like it. So I'm gonna move on and I'm either still looking at the Rivian or the Hummer. I have an order in for both. I was lucky enough to get into uh, the Hummer EV Edition 1 uh, uh, list. And I also was one of the very first people to put my deposit down on um, the Rivian R1T. Uh, and I could technically supposedly take delivery as of June 2021. But I'm very undecided at this point. I'm going to wait and see what these two companies um, come up with over the next six months to a year. Um, now I, I have six, seven months for this. And it's very likely we're looking at six, seven months for this guy. Uh, ideally, both of these will get a little delay to give me a little bit more time to end my lease on the Gladiator and then jump into one of these guys. Uh, I know for a fact that my next truck will either be another Gladiator or it will be one of these two options. Um, now, the only reason I say another Gladiator is if they put a Hellcat motor in a Gladiator, I don't even care what these things will do. I'm gonna go get the Hellcat Motor Gladiator because I love my truck and it, it would be really cool to have a super powerful version of that. Uh, exact opposite of these two options, I know, I don't care, say what you will. Um, the next point I wanted to quickly make is um, about purchasing or leasing these things. It all depends on your place in life, okay? If, if you, own a business, however, um, you probably already know the advantages of leasing, okay? Leasing makes it a lot easier to write off your vehicle than if you were to purchase, uh, because if you're purchasing, you have to stick to a depreciation schedule over so many years, and you have to kind of um, depreciate the vehicle over those many years. But when you sell the vehicle, you have to, you may have to take back some of that depreciation, depending on how much you end up getting for it, and this and that. It gets, it gets kind of messy on paper and it's not very obvious uh, how much of a um, uh, tax advantage you're in for, but uh, both of these trucks are gonna qualify uh, for section 139 or whatever that thing is. And uh, I, uh, so, so you should be okay if you're purchasing it, but I still prefer leasing because you're essentially just paying for depreciation so there's no question as to what it is that you're writing off. So anyway, so that's just a that's just a business thing, um, tax business thing, and it may not apply to 75, 80 percent of you listening to this right now. So we won't really get into that anymore. Let's just talk about the other advantages. Here's why I don't want to own an EV truck, okay? Because here's what's going to happen. This Hummer is going to come out and it's going to have a sticker of $113,000 plus tax and all that stuff. It's going to push you well over $125,000, $130,000. So we're talking about $130,000 truck that is very likely not coming out until 2022. If I get a three-year lease on this truck, 
I'm paying the depreciation for the next three years. I'm paying the tax for just that amount of the depreciation. If I pay to purchase the truck, I'm writing a check for 130 grand. And then in three years, that truck is very likely to depreciate heavily only because a 350 mile range is going to be almost nothing by 2025. 2025, you may actually have seven, 800 mile range vehicles. You're not going to want a 350 mile range vehicle. Now, I know the Hummer is the only one that has actually made it clear that they will uh, have an upgradable battery. Um, but again, I, my thoughts are that battery is going to cost quite a bit of money and I don't necessarily want to be in that business. So um, for me, I feel like these electric EVs, they're, they're uh, evolving so fast, they're improving so quickly over the years. Um, and, you know, just look at an old uh, Tesla Model S, right? The older ones, you know, they can't even compete with the newer ones. So if you're in the market for Tesla Model S, you're not gonna want an older one. If you are, you're gonna want a heavy discount for it. Tesla's hold their value quite well just because of the way they manipulate the used market. Um, they're very smart with that, but I don't feel like that's gonna be true with the Hummer. It's certainly not gonna be true with the Rivian. Uh, and uh, they're, they're gonna depreciate quite quickly. For that reason and that reason alone, I'm gonna go for the lease. Here's why, because these, these manufacturers, they can't come out and say, oh, it's a $112,000 truck and you're, we're going to residualize it so that there's only $30,000 left at the end of the day. No, they, they're not going to do that because then they're conveying the message that, oh man, we know this, this vehicle is going to depreciate heavily and very fast. They can't do it that way. So they're going to probably do like a 40% depreciation over that three years, leaving this truck at somewhere around like that $60,000, $70,000 buyout, which means I'm only going to pay for $40,000 of that over the term of the three years versus what I know for a fact is this thing's going to fall to about 50 grand. So instead of 40, I would pay for like 60 plus and all of the tax and all of the liability for actually owning it. So no thanks, I'm not gonna own one of these things um, just because it just doesn't make any sense financially and from a, being responsible for, um, for the, uh, the depreciation of the vehicle, the true depreciation of the vehicle. And again, what I talked about earlier, which is the tax. So the tax alone would be enough for me to make my decision. However, so, you know, if that's not important to you, that those are the other two. Um, the other two things. Um, so give me your thoughts. Let me know which one you're uh, vying for. I know a lot of you are, uh, there's, there's, I don't know, several hundred thousand people that have, uh, that have reserved a Cybertruck. I think it's a super cool truck. And uh, I think you're going to be very happy with it if you're not using it for truck-like things. Uh, and it's probably going to do a couple of truck-like things better than most trucks, but not all truck-like things. Now, the last thing we didn't talk about, the elephant in the room, is the Ford F-150. Of course that's going to be awesome. Of course it's going to be the better one to own. And of course it's going to be like a lower cost of ownership probably over time. It's going to be a real truck. And here's the problem with the, with the F-150. It's just going to be an F-150, guys. It's an awesome truck. I love the F-150, but it's not going to be some cool new thing. It's going to be an F-150 with an electric motor. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually a really good thing. And Ford's proven the F-150 uh, to be just a badass workhorse. Uh, and it will probably be just that in EV mode. Uh, and I think that if you're really serious about owning an EV truck for real work and not jackassing around like me, uh, I think you should probably get an F-150. I just love this Hummer too much. Uh, I think this is the, the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, and I'm, I'm absolutely shocked that GMC was able to create something this cool. Um, stands to be seen if they really deliver it. Um, but that's why I didn't talk about the F-150, because I think it's too obvious of a choice. I think uh, you'd be silly not to consider the F-150 if you're not just jackassing around. Again, 
Um, but uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. I, I just love having a cool new toy and it doesn't really matter to me that much that it's a real, real work truck. As long as it does the truck things that I need it to do, um, I'm not looking for, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a landscaper or, um, you know, a contractor or I don't use my truck for, for my daily job. If I did, I certainly wouldn't own any of these three things. <laughs> it would definitely be the F-150. I'd love to see Toyota uh, come up with an electric taco. I think that would be super cool. And I really think there's a huge market for Toyota. They're probably just months away from announcing it. Um, and I think that would be amazing if they haven't already announced it. Maybe I'm, I've just not heard about it. Um, Anyway, love to hear your thoughts, love to hear your input, your feedback, your comments, uh, your insults, your, your applause, whatever it is that you've got for me. Um, tell me which one you're, you're um, waiting for. Tell me if you've got deposits on multiple ones. And tell me this, tell me, did the Hummer coming out give you pause on your initial choice? Because you probably, you're probably here because of the R1T. Uh, but tell me if you maybe changed your mind or are now going to wait and see since the Hummer got announced. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again and have a good one.